All right, guys, today I'm going to be doing a video kind of similar in explanation to a video that I did talking about why I don't like or don't think that the Gerber strong arm is a very good knife. And what I really want to do in this video is address this trend that seems to be quite uh, recurrent in the community. And that is that a lot of people are watching, especially destruction or, you know, hard use videos on the YouTubes and are really beginning to think that you know, survival knives, bushcraft knives, and wilderness blades as a whole, their primary value or primary, um, like the, the test of a good knife is for it to be indestructible. And I think that this is a highly skewed metric because when we solely judge a blade off of how indestructible it is, uh, noted by this Glock field knife here that is very indestructible, um, you end up sacrificing a lot of good abilities that a knife should have. And moreover, in the previous video I did, talking about how there are many attributes to a knife outside of durability. And so if a blade is reasonably durable, um, that's really what it's about, you know, like having a reasonable durability, but also having very comfortable ergonomics, having a blade shape that is very useful, having a very sharp edge, having good materials that are going to be able to last, um, you know, like have good edge, ret edge retention and so on and so forth. So I wanted to bring out a handful of knives and really kind of go through this because especially um, YouTube creators like Joe X are going out there and are going out there and are just sheer testing a knife until it breaks. And there are knives such as the Gerber Strong Arm, such as this Glock Field Knife. I don't know if he's actually tested one of these, but these things are insanely durable. And this is the one that I want to use for this video to really hammer this point home that, you know, this knife here, the Glock Field Knife, I believe this is the 81, is an insanely durable blade. Um, it is made out of 1090, sorry, it is made out of 5160 spring steel. It is about quarter inch or about a quarter inch thick. I think it's closer to three sixteenths, but you know, it is extremely durable. You're really not going to be able to break a blade like this. And moreover, the part of this knife that kind of sucks is the actual edge. If you have ever tried to use one of these knives outside of trying to sheerly destroy it, you'll quickly find that the edge itself, while it is sharp, is at least at the bevel so abrupt that it's very hard to do things such as feather sticking. On top of that, because the blade or the very cutting edge actually starts so far away from where you're holding it, it's very hard to really choke up on that blade and get very very good control over what you're doing. So when you're trying to do finer motor skills and you know feather stick with this blade or even do uh, fine carving to say create traps to get food, this is a blade that's going to be very challenging to do those tasks with because the actual cutting edge, as you guys can see here in this light, doesn't actually start until here. Like we're talking from where you're holding this blade, like say you're even choked up right here. We're talking this is about an inch, inch and a half of, you know, space between where you're holding and where that actual edge starts. And even still, this very part right here is not particularly sharp. Realistically, it actually starts getting sharp around here. And even to top that off, like I said, this bevel is so thin and abrupt that while this is a sharp knife, it doesn't really slice through materials very well. In addition to that too, this is a very thin overall, um, or I should say narrow blade. So this grind is not going to be as significant <coughs> as say this Falcon even uh, A1. As you can physically see here, the grind on this A1 is wider than the entire Glock field knife. So the grind on this A1 is longer and going to translate to better knife cutting and slicing characteristics. Uh, so overall, that is something that like we really have to take into factor. Durability isn't the sole reason you should choose a knife. And this is why in many videos I've tried to talk about and emphasize, so long as you have a reasonable durability, i.e. things that you can go and baton a piece of wood and split it, make kindling, make a fire with that knife, that's about as durable as you need it. You don't actually need a blade that can be jammed between two pieces of, you know, concrete 
and or pry up a piece of concrete from the ground, right? Like you don't need to jab this into, you know, a concrete slab and be able to lift it from the earth, say. You know, th that's kind of unreasonable and realistically not useful. I mean, you're never going to really do a lot of hard use tasks in survival to that extent. Now, once again, in survival, it's not unreasonable to think that you might chop down small brush or kindling with your knife or that you might use the spine of it to you know whack some hard dry pieces of wood to you know break them off from say like a spruce tree to get some kindling right so there are times where you're going to use your blade in harder applications but you're not going to be trying to cut through steel you know rebar with any blade in survival that's not really a realistic application and so once again predicating a knife or solely choosing a knife because it is the most durable option out there is going to leave you with a lot of problems. We've talked about the problems of this blade. Now let's talk about some of the ergonomic problems. Now this is once again not a full fair comparison because this was partly designed originally as a bayonet for the Steyr Aug or Aug and so this is technically more of a bayonet than it is anything else but once again we notice a very militaristic rounded handle and while this this is not uncomfortable at like in hold to hold on what you really begin to notice is once again with a, a proper field or wilderness or survival blade you should be able to easily set your thumb on the back of the blade and once again really be able to get close to that cutting edge because in a lot of tasks control over the blade is going to be the most important part and so with this not only do you have this very rounded plasticky handle that doesn't offer a lot of traction as a whole you have not only a saw back or root saw back on here you have this upper guard and while the upper guard is bent forward so it is more easily attainable for you to put your thumb up here this is the closest i can get my thumb to a semi-comfortable position and it's not at all comfortable because you have this portion digging into the meat of your thumb and then of course you have this saw back here so you can already see that there's a lot of ergonomic compromise when it comes to sheerly choosing a knife for durability is this glock knife more durable than the falcon even a1 yes if you take both of these knives and you try to cut through a piece of rebar this knife will probably do it this knife will probably break doing it and once again that goes back to proper knife characteristics this a1 by falkneven is a blade that has a convex grind so what that means is that there is very very little blade material at the very cutting edge and it thickens back up once it gets to about midway in the grind. Now what this does for knife characteristics is it gives it a very thin, very lean edge for slicing and chopping. So if you go and you chop something like a soft material like wood, this is going to bite very deep and with reasonable ease. In fact, a lot of your axes, say from Gransfors Brooks um, and others like Holtefers and such are going to be actually ground with a convex grind for that same reason. In addition, what a good convex grind does is it provides a very thin, slicey edge so that whether you're trying to cut a piece of natural material or you're trying to feather stick, this blade will do a very good job. Now, once again, going over to the ergonomic characteristics of a proper field blade, you'll notice one, this is rubberized, so there's loads of traction here. And also at the same time, being that this is rubber, it is very temperature neutral. So if you're out at negative 30, negative 40, trying to survive, this will not be a cold handle to hold on to. So that's another plus. In addition to, this is going to be far more ergonomically easy to use and as I mentioned earlier there is no guard up here preventing me from easily resting my thumb there's also no jimping up here or anything else that would legitimately create a hot spot if I was holding my thumb up here for an extended period of time which is important to note because with a lot of bushcraft and field blades you, you will be using them for an extended period of time. Once again, if you're creating something like a figure four deadfall trap to trap animals, you're going to be holding this knife, creating and 
large notching pieces of wood for probably about 15 to 30 minutes depending on your skill and your resources. So you're going to be holding your knife for an extended period of time. Having something that has a saw back on it like this will create hot spots in your thumb as you can already see here. Like if I put pressure down, you can see how my thumb is already getting an imprint of the saw. Whereas if I put my thumb down on this guy, there's realistically really nothing. It is a little bit of a thinner edge or a thinner blade stock, so it might get a little uncomfy, but it's not bad at all. And once again, on this more bushcraft black, we notice a rubberized handle and no upper guard. So once again, we can get really close on that edge. In fact, the Mora Bushcraft Black is even better than the Falkneven on the edge kind of uh, on the edge kind of debate because the edge starts right after the handle ends. So right at that very ending point, there is no you know cut or anything like that for the grind line to start. The grind is right there. So I could potentially put a piece of wood right here, have my finger right here, so I have a ton of fine motor skill controllability when it comes to say things like feather sticking and notch making. So that is what I think ultimately makes a wilderness survival and field blade more valuable than sheer durability. And I think, like I said, a lot of people have seemingly forgot that there's more characteristics to a blade than it sheerly being durable. And honestly, I see this a lot, especially in the comments on my videos and on other destruction videos where people are like, yeah, you know, this knife totally sucks. And uh, Falcon even A1 was one of those where they're like, they would never trust my life to that knife. And, you know, just on and on and on. And honestly, I've tested my Falcon even A1 quite a bit. And um, it really is realistically durable. This knife, once again, if you're cutting through things like wood, uh, even hardwoods, this is going to be more than adequate for holding up to hard use, reasonable hard use tasks. It's not the most durable knife out there, and I don't go into a lot of my outdoor or even knife reviews as a whole saying, this is the most durable knife ever created, because I know it's not the most durable. I say it is realistically durable and it can be used for harder tasks. Now once again, doesn't mean that you should go cut through rebar with it because that's obviously not a very realistic test or task that you would be fielded with, but if it comes to sourcing wood to build a fire to stay warm overnight, the A1 will be able to do that. This bushcraft black would probably struggle a little bit but still be able to do it. And so you know, when it comes down to it, evaluate your knives for more than just their pure durability. Uh, pure durability is great. And once again, the fact that this Glock knife is probably one of the most durable knives in existence. And I say one of them, I'm not, you know, sheerly saying this is the most durable, but it is probably one of the more durable knives in existence. It also leaves a lot to be desired. Once again, the ergonomics are not there. They're not very comfortable to use. The bevel is very high and very far away from the actual handle, so it gives it poor cutting characteristics as opposed to a more traditional knife. Now, once again, a lot of that is largely forgivable because the Glock, Bay or the Glock 81 and the earlier version were literally designed to be bayonets, so they're not really designed for you know going and cutting up some wood to start a fire. They're really more battle implements that were just sold on the civilian market. So that's ultimately the core argument I have of why, you know, like you don't need a knife that is extremely durable, a blade that you just can't break. It's not always the most realistic thing. And once again, realize that for every bit of durability you get, you're sacrificing another portion of your knife in its abilities to form or perform as a knife. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.